My name is Daniel Feeks. I'm the head of a very small team of people called the Implementation Support Unit and we work on something called the Biological Weapons Convention which is based here in Geneva in the United Nations Office for Disarmament Affairs. Uh, my name is Valeria Santori. I work uh, together with Daniel uh, on um, supporting this unit uh, with some work and I work in that uh, context as a consultant. So Daniel, um, I was wondering whether you could explain in a few words what this biological convention is, what are the objectives and the main sure, provisions? Sure. Well, the Biological Weapons Convention is an international treaty. It's negotiated by states back in the early 1970s. And the, the main objective of the Biological Weapons Convention is to prevent the use of biological weapons. So it's to prevent states from using biological weapons. So it has, it's a uh, ban treaty. Basically, it bans states from possessing and using biological weapons, and it has various provisions for having investigations and for states to be providing assistance in case biological weapons are used. And how many states participate in this treaty? Um, nowadays, there are 180 states parties to the, to the convention, so it's almost universal. That's quite a good there's, number. Yeah, there's 17 countries that haven't joined the convention yet, and, and then we, our, our team, are working with those 17 countries to encourage them to join the convention as well. Because the objective is to have all the whole community of states. Exactly. Uh, the, the, the ultimate objective would be to have all, all countries in the world to be members of the convention so that then the ban and the norm against using biological weapons would be universal. And how does the convention actually work? I mean, how is it in practice yeah. um, put into operation? It's a very short convention. It's not a very detailed convention at all. It's only four pages long. And it's mainly an agreement between states. It doesn't create any big organization. It doesn't create any institution as such. So, as I said, we're a very small team. We're only three people working here in Geneva on the Biological Weapons Convention. And what it, how it really works is it works through having meetings, big diplomatic meetings that take place here in the UN building in Geneva. And the member states come together in those meetings. They discuss different issues relating to biological warfare. They discuss how to implement the convention, and then sometimes they make agreements. Every five years they have something called a review conference, which is when they can actually take decisions and come to agreements about how to perhaps improve the implementation of the convention or how to do something differently. So it's really it's a, a diplomatic instrument, and it really works through multilateral diplomacy, which takes place here in Geneva. And then we, in our unit, we support those, those meetings. Which is quite an endeavour. It, it is, exactly, yeah. It's a, it's a big job. We're called an implementation support unit, so when we can, we support states to actually implement the convention, yeah. but because we're only three people, yeah. it's very hard to support 180 states parties all the time, so there's a, there's a limit to what we can do in terms of um, funding and financing, obviously. Um, so one of the issues that's much discussed at the moment by, our, by the member states to the convention is the issue of um, biological weapons and if biological weapons are actually used, for example, by another country against another country or perhaps, as people talk about these days, about bioterrorism. So if terrorists actually use biological weapons. So yeah. um, perhaps you can say something about how the convention and how the international community would respond if biological weapons were used perhaps by terrorists or by a country. Yeah, well, as much as we try to prevent such an occurrence from happening, uh, we cannot exclude that, unfortunately, one day this could be an event and we need, uh, as a community, to be prepared for such uh, circumstance. So, as regards the Biological Weapons Convention, there is an article which provides that uh, um, states can request assistance from other states' parties in case they believe they've been the object of an attack with biological weapons by others. Um, and uh, there are um, mechanisms uh, in the international community to help states cope with a situation like that. There are organizations that have a specific mandate uh, to help. One of them is the World Health Organization, mm -hmm. for example, and there are other actors that uh, would be uh, on the ground. Um, you mentioned before that the Biological Weapons Convention does not establish an international organization. There's a unit which has a limited mandate and um, this brings me to the consideration that there is no 
agency uh, at the moment, which has a leading, a coordinating, overall coordinating role in case of the use of biological weapons. So it is very important that the various actors that would be there to help states respond to a use of biological weapons are well coordinated so that their action is effective. And at the moment there are efforts that um, are being pursued to make sure that this cooperation works uh, to the best possible.